All right, thanks for watching. And today I wanna show you something really, really cool. So, hopefully you know from calculus or from algebra that in general, e to the x plus y is in fact equal to e to the x times e to the y. And we wanna ask ourselves, is the same thing true for matrices? And the answer is super, super interesting. So, first of all, how do you define the exponential of a matrix? Well, you just use power series. So it's just the sum from zero to infinity of a to the n over n factorial. And I have done a separate video on this in case you're curious. Now, let's take the following two matrices. So a is zero, one, zero, zero, then if you calculate this, then you actually get a squared is just a zero matrix. So what this expression becomes, and remember this is i plus a plus a squared over two factorial plus a cubed over three factorial plus dot dot dot. Because a squared is the zero matrix and in particular, a cubed will be the zero matrix, a to the fourth will be the zero matrix, etc., etc. So the exponential just becomes i plus a. So like e i e i o, sort of. So e to the a is i plus a, and that's just one zero 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 plus, uh, sorry, one zero zero one plus. 0, 1, 0, 0, and then we just get 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay. So this is e to the a, and now also consider the following matrix. B is 0, 0, 1, 0. In an identical way, we can calculate that e to the b is the i plus b, which is just 1, 1, 1, 0. So you see, we get explicit examples of e to the a and e to the b. Now, um, let's multiply them. So let's, on the one hand, calculate e to the a plus e times e to the b. So e to the a times e to the b is just 1, 1, 0, 1 times 1, 1, 1, 0. And that equals, so 1 times 1, so 2 and then one, one, and zero. That's on the one hand. Now, on the other hand, let's calculate a, e to the a plus b. So a plus b is zero, one, one, zero. And the cute thing about this matrix is If you square it, you get the identity. So if you do a plus b squared, if you calculate this times itself, you get one, zero, zero, one. If you calculate a plus b cubed, well, you get the identity times this. So zero, one, one, zero, which is itself. So a plus b itself. So the point is, if you take odd powers, of a plus b, you get a plus b back. See, so 0, 1, 1, 0. If you take even powers of a plus b, you just get the identity, which is 1, 0, 0, 1. Which means to calculate the exponential, so e to the a plus b, well, that's the sum from n from 0 to infinity of a plus b to the n over n factorial, you can really split it up into two things. You can sum over the odd numbers n and sum over the even numbers n. So what this really is, is just the sum from n from 0 to infinity of a plus b to 2n plus 1 over n factorial, and sorry, 2n plus 1 factorial, plus the sum from n from 0 to infinity 
of a plus b to the 2n over 2n factorial. So you're just saying any integer is either odd or is even. And of course, I'm like sweeping the convergence issue under the rug. Uh, how do you know you can do that? Assuming this uniformly converges, it's okay. So definitely there might be some issues where it's outside the interval of convergence, but let's ignore that for a second. And now the nice thing is, well, we have this formula, right? A plus B to the 2N plus 1 is this matrix. A plus B to the 2N is this matrix. So what this really becomes is the sum of from N from 0 to infinity of, so I think 0, 1, 1, 0 just this matrix over 2n plus 1 factorial plus the sum from n from 0 to infinity of the identity, so 1, 0, 0, 1 over 2n factorial. And the nice thing is, well, those matrices don't depend on n, so you can just pull them out. And you're left with... 0, 1, 1, 0, sum from n from 0 to infinity of 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial plus 1, 0, 0, 1, sum from n from 0 to infinity of 1 over 2n factorial. Now, the question is, what are those two numbers? Well, um, how can I say it? <laughs> This looks almost like sine, except for sine, we need a minus one to the n, right? Uh, but, uh, well, because it almost looks like sine, it's actually cinch. And if you look at the power series for cinch and cosh, you get that this value here is really cinch of x with x is one. So cinch of one. And the other one is cosh. Oh my gosh! Would you have expected to have that in this video? Oh, this is Dr. Payam. So it is a show. So in other words, we get e to the a plus b is cosh of one, cinch of one, cinch of one, cosh of one. So interestingly, it's almost like, well, yeah, it is almost like the rotation matrix, but with, you know, there is this plus sign here, which is okay, it's a derivative here, and you know, we have um, one. <laughs> we have caution cinch, sorry, that's what I meant. So this is e to the a plus b, and I would like to remind you that, well, e to the a times e to the b, that was 2, 1, 1, 0. Which is not the same thing. So in this case, interestingly, e to the a plus b, is e to the is not equal to e to the a times e to the b. Oh my god. Okay, so point is matrices are very weird. And in fact, what went wrong? So then let us analyze this a little bit. Why is matrix multiplication so like why are matrices weird? Because remember, matrix multiplication doesn't behave like you expect. In particular, notice, if you calculate A, B, that was 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and I believe this is just 1, 0, 0, 0. If, but if you do B, A, you get 0, 0, 1, 0, times 0, 1, 0, 0, and you get 0, 0, 0, 1. So indeed, AB is not equal to BA. And in fact, it turns out this is why the exponentials are not necessarily the same. In the following sense, let me show you that if AB equals BA, then in fact, we would have this identity be true. So if a, B 
equals BA, then we have E to the A plus B equals E to the A, E to the B. And this is a really short and cute proof, so let me do that. So E to the A plus B, that's the sum from N from zero to infinity of A plus B to the N over N factorial. And now you would like to use the binomial theorem, but you have to understand the binomial theorem, what makes it work is that, you know, X, Y is Y, X. So in general, if you foil this out, you would get weird factors like A, B, B, A, A, B, A, B, you know, A, B, ABBA, A, B, B, A, etc., etc. But um, because A, B is B, A in this by assumption, we can actually literally just use Pas you know, uh, Pascal's formula. So the binomial theorem. So this would be sum from N from zero to infinity and sum from k from 0 to n of n choose k, a to the k, b n minus k over n factorial. Now, I would like to remind you, n choose k over n factorial, that's n factorial over n factorial, k factorial, n minus k factorial. The n factorials cancel out and you would just get 1 over k factorial and minus k factorial. So you would get sum from n from 0 to infinity, sum from k from 0 to n of, so uh, a to the k, b to the n minus k, over uh, k factorial n minus k factorial. And now we would like to do something really cute. We would like to do a discrete version of Fubini's theorem. So ideally, we would like to interchange those sums, but let's see what's happening. So if this is the k axis and this is the n axis, well, n goes from zero to infinity and k just goes up to n. So you see if n is 1, k goes from 0 to 1. If n is 2, k goes from 0, 1, 2, etc., etc. So in other words, we're summing up over this dotted region where this is the dotted line n equals k. Okay, and how can we write that? Well, notice this is really, uh, if you think about it in terms of k, or I guess, in, yeah, if you think of it in terms of k, for every k, we're summing n from k to infinity. So if k is 2 here, we have n from uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc., etc. And k goes from 0 to whatever. So this is really the sum from k from 0 to infinity and the sum from n equals k to infinity of a to the k over k factorial, b to the n minus k, n minus k factorial. Now, the upshot is, why did we do that? Because um, this thing doesn't depend on n anymore, because it just purely depends on k. So it's the same reason why we pull constants outside of the integral. So same thing here, it's constant with respect to n, and we get sum k from 0 to infinity, a to the k over k factorial, sum n equals k to infinity, b to the n minus k over n minus k factorial. But notice, this is really the same thing as saying, well, uh, we start from n minus k equals 0. So k equals 0. To infinity a to the k over k factorial sum of n minus k equals 0 to infinity b n minus k over n minus k factorial but notice this sort of purely just depends on n minus k so if you like you can change variables so i is n minus k 
and this becomes the sum from k equals 0 to infinity, ak over k factorial, and sum from j equals 0, or sorry, i equals 0 to infinity of bi over i factorial. Which looks weird. It looks like a Spanish exclamation mark. But what is nice about this? Look, this thing doesn't depend on k anymore. So it is a constant, and you pull it out. And you basically get sum from i equals 0 to infinity b to the i over i factorial and what do you want to say? Sum from k equals 0 to infinity of um, a to the k over k factorial and if you do that you get e to the b times e to the a. So what you get, well, what I've technically I've shown is that e to the a plus b is e to the b times e to the a, but well, a plus b is b plus a. So I kind of saved myself here. So in particular, e to the a plus b is e to the b plus a. So I have shown that e to the b plus a is e to the b times e to the a, and well, by interchanging a and b, you do find that e to the a plus b is e to the a times e to the b. If, again, the whole point of this video is you need this extra assumption if a b equals b a. And it's, I'm, I'm not sure if this is a necessary condition, so it's possible that there are other ways that e to the a plus b could be e to the a times e to the b, but at least I know that if a, b is b, a, then this is true. All right, I hope you like this linear algebra extravaganza. If you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.